How to fit reversing gear to a Stuart 5A steam engine. Part 1. Examination and identifying the parts of the reversing gear. With the 5A sat on my small turntable, which I'm turning by hand as smoothly as possible, you can see all the parts of the engine. This engine, in its current condition, is not the best looking 5A I've ever seen, but mechanically it's quite good. And before I start to dismantle it, I'll just give it a quick run so you can see and hear how well it sounds. And as you can see in here, it runs very well. Here's the valve gear in a plastic box, and I'm going to tip all these parts onto the bench to see exactly what I have to play with. Some of the parts in the box are nothing to do with the valve gear, so I sorted that out and ended up with just the valve gear parts. This is one of the eccentric straps and eccentric rod parts. In the center of the picture, you can see the expansion link. This component allows the reverse eccentric and the forward eccentric to be engaged with the valve rod. The position of the expansion link is controlled by the link rods at the top left of the picture. I'll explain the operation in detail as I go on. In this clip I'm seeing which way around the eccentric rod fits on the eccentric strap. These two parts are firmly bolted to the steam chest. Most of the engineering standard on this engine is quite good, but the pin that goes through the castings is not good at all. I'm going to remanufacture this part using a piece of steel. I'm really not going to clean up too many of these parts because the owner of the engine in the USA wants to do this himself and he also wants to paint the engine too. But certain parts I do need to clean up as I go to make the job easier. Here are all the components that I currently have for this reversing gear. The reversing gear parts in this clip are sat in their approximate position that they will be in when fitted to the engine. This is the valve fork and the shaped piece of metal in the valve fork is the die block which slides in the slot of the expansion link. Time to get on with the job. The first thing to do is to make sure that the eccentric straps fit on the eccentric sheaves. And they do, so that's a good start. I need to dismantle part of the engine, starting with these horrendously oversized nuts that someone's made to hold the steam chest cover to the steam chest. I've been looking forward to this because these nuts are really horrible and spoil the entire appearance of the engine. I often go on about badly painted engines generally not being very good, but this is the exception to the rule. This is what lurks inside the steam chest, it's a slide valve. Before I do anything else though, this paint on the steam chest cover has to go. Black and yellow on a green engine is not my idea of good taste. So into the pot of cellulose thinners, next to the bracket from the small toy steam engine, goes the steam chest cover. And while the paint has been removed, I'm going to take out the valve rod and modify this. Then I'm going to change the fitting on the end of the valve rod and fit a valve fork, which in turn holds the die block that slides in the expansion link. Note to self, remake all of the pins using steel. The slide valve is held in place very loosely by two nuts, one on the top of it and one underneath it. Often I see steam engines that do not run because the builder has tightened the two nuts onto the valve itself. This is no good at all. Steam engine slide valves always need some end float so the pressure of the steam can hold the valve onto the port face. Using a felt tip pen I've made a mark on the top of the valve so I know which way round it goes if it's not symmetrically machined. And here is the valve fork removed from the steam chest. I need to remove this fitting from the end of the valve rod and replace it with the valve fork as I mentioned previously. The easiest way to do this is to fit the valve rod in the chuck and then unscrew the fitting using my small barco adjustable spanner. And while the valve rod is still in the chuck, I'm fitting the valve fork to the rod in exactly the same way. As I mentioned earlier, the owner wants to clean up a lot of these parts. As the position of the slide valve in the steam chest is critical, I'm going to clean up this part before I fit it all back together. When I first ran this engine and set the timing of it, I noticed that quite a lot of oil was bubbling out of the top of this gland fitting. So here I'm removing it, I'm going to clean it up, then I'm going to refit it using some sealant. I'd like to show what goes on inside this gland fitting, so I'm just wiping it with a cloth, and then I can take it apart. 
This type of gland fitted to a Stuart 5A is a bit different to the design of a stuffing gland fitted to a much smaller engine. Don't forget a Stuart 5A is a small full-size engine, not really a model. The adjustable part of the gland nut presses down on this collar, which in turn compresses the valve packing against the shaft, making the joint steam tight. And here I'm examining the gland packing to see whether it needs replacing, and no it doesn't, it's in very good order. I think I'll reuse this, it's braided graphited yarn. And here are the three component parts of a 5A stuffing gland, which I'm going to clean up and polish. This is a view of inside the steam chest. It's very oily and a bit dirty, but the valve face is in very good condition. All that remains in this episode is just to replace the parts in the plastic pot, just so I know where they are. In the next episode, I'll be refitting the stuffing gland and refitting the valve rod. Then I can start the assembly of the Stevenson's Link valve gear. But that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.